Hello space fans, we are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. But before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. In this video, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of SpaceX. A piece of space junk from a SpaceX rocket launch in 2015 is hurtling towards the moon and is set to crash into the lunar surface on March the 4th. Astronomers have predicted. The piece is part of a Falcon 9 rocket that launched from Florida in 2015. The purpose of the mission was to send the DSCOVR space weather satellite into space, approximately 1 million miles away from Earth. However, after completing its mission, the upper stage was so high that it didn't have enough fuel to return to Earth and has been in an uncontrolled orbit due to competing gravitational forces from the Earth, Moon and Sun. Now, seven years later, the upper stage of the rocket still remains tumbling through space. It was too far away from Earth and had too little fuel to return. So instead, it's been yanked around by the Earth and the Moon's gravitational pull in what the experts say is a chaotic orbit. It's almost like a billiard ball bouncing off of other billiard balls. Bill Gray, an independent astronomer who first discovered that the Falcon 9 piece would hit the Moon, told NPR. In other words, the path of this piece of space junk could have gone in a lot of different directions. Like the many scenarios for where balls may roll when a player breaks in the pool table. Gray says it could have gone into orbit where it would have hit the Earth, or it could have even been picked up into an orbit around the Sun. But in mid-January, Gray got new data that showed the rocket piece was going to crash into the Moon. The rocket piece that will crash into the moon is no small thing. It's about 12 meters long, or the size of a school bus, and weighs 4 tons. It's also whizzling around space at about 5,600 miles per hour. Jonathan McDowell, an astronomer with the Center for Astrophysics, Harvard and Smithsonian. The rocket piece is going to get completely destroyed. A huge plume of moon dust is going to go up where it will hit and settle down over a wide area of the moon. The impact will leave a new crater on the dark side of the moon. After about a day, the dust will settle and there will be a sparkly fresh new lunar crater, McDowell has said. The very first human-made artifact to make contact with the moon was the Soviet Lunar 2 in 1959. An extraordinary feat, as it was only two years after the launch of Sputnik 1, the first artificial Earth satellite. The mission consisted of a rocket, a probe, and three bombs. One released a cloud of sodium gas to enable the crash to be seen from Earth. The USSR didn't want the groundbreaking mission to be called a hoax. The other two bombs were spheres of pentagonal medallions inscribed with the date and Soviet symbols. If they exploded as planned, they would have scattered 144 medallions over the lunar surface. Other crashes have been missions gone wrong, like the Israeli Bereshit lander in 2019. This was especially controversial, as the lander carried a secret cargo of dried tardigrades, tiny creatures that could have been revived in the presence of water. Various spacecraft have naturally decayed and fallen out of orbit, like the Japanese relay satellite Okina in 2009. Others have been intentionally crashed at the end of their mission life. The NASA Ebb and Flow spacecraft were deliberately crashed into the lunar south pole in 2012, specifically to avoid any risk of damaging the Apollo landing sites. Impacting at a speed of 6,000 kilometers per hour, they left craters 6 meters across. Many crashes have been used to collect seismic data. Observations from the controlled impact of Saturn's third stage boosters and ascent modules from the Apollo missions were particularly valuable, as timing, location and impact energy were known. In the past, NASA has conducted missions to crash objects into the moon on purpose. In 2009, they sent a spacecraft called LC Ross to see if water particles would come up in the impact. Overall, this predicted impact in March 
won't be a significant change to the moon. But Gray still believes there's something to learn from it. It could be a reasonably interesting scientific discovery that we'll be able to learn about the nature of lunar impacts. How large a crater you get for a given object's size and given speed. We may also learn a certain amount of the geology of this particular part of the moon, Gray has said. While experts are tracking the path of the Falcon 9 rocket piece and what can be learned from this accidental impact, there's also a renewed conversation about how to handle the amount of space junk that's floating around. The US Department of Defense is tracking more than 27,000 pieces of space junk, including old rocket pieces and satellites. But movement on how to exactly remove the junk has been somewhat stalled. I know the government is really taking a very close look at this at the moment, McDowell said. People are aware that space junk is a big issue that needs to be addressed. It's just getting off the committee stage and onto the actually doing something about it stage that seems to be stuck right now. The amount of old space junk in low Earth orbit is of particular concern. John Krasides, director of the Center for Space Cyber Strategy and Cybersecurity at the University at Buffalo, says it's possible that within 50 years we get to a point where there's so much debris we won't be able to launch any more satellites. When objects start to collide with other objects, that's going to cause more debris and you get a cascading effect, citing what's known as Kessler's syndrome. That's a big concern. What isn't a big concern though is this accidental lunar crash causing any harm to people on Earth or any major problems for the moon itself. It's a policy concern in the long run, McDowell said. But this particular piece of space junk smashing into the moon, the moon's had a lot of things smash into it over the years. It'll be fine. The Falcon 9 rocket stage is significantly larger than the tiny ebb and flow spacecraft and is traveling faster. The crash will make a much larger crater, which will kick up chunks of rock and dust. In this airless world, the dust could travel a fair way before settling down. Although there are no cameras to observe the crash, at some point NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter is likely to pass over and image the impact point. We'll learn something about the geology of the location from the color differences and distribution of ejected material. It's an opportunity to learn more about the moon's mysterious far side. While this unintended lunar crash won't be visible from Earth, the hope is that the moon orbiting spacecraft such as NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and India's Chandrayaan-2 will be able to study the resulting crater or any subsurface material that gets ejected from the impact. With this, we have come to the end of our video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Thank you for watching. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.